could hear the familiar clink of teacups from the kitchen and the murmurs of hushed yet fierce conversation. Farida's voice, sharp and critical, easily carried through to the living room. Layla, Farida's voice sliced through the air. You know, Mona, she's so perfect for our family. Mona, sitting upright, sipped her tea nonchalantly, but her eyes held a subtle glint of satisfaction. She was Farida's daughter-in-law, too, but oh, so differently treated. Layla, accustomed yet never indifferent to Farida's venomous words, kept her composure. Her hands, however, subtly clenched the fabric of her dress. She has given me a grandson, a beautiful, healthy baby boy, a successor to our lineage, Farida continued, her voice oozing a sickly sweet venom. But you, Layla, what have you offered? Nothing but silent tears and a barren womb. The word stung, as they always did. Layla's eyes darted around the room, landing momentarily on a picture of her and Ahmed, her tower of strength amidst this perpetual storm. Farida had a skill, a cruel one, to twist words into daggers. And yet, Layla's response was a gentle smile. Though her eyes mirrored an untold sadness, she spoke, her voice soft. Farida, every seed blooms in its own time. Patience is a virtue. The atmosphere tensed, yet Layla's gaze remained steady. Farida, scoffing, chimed in. You can speak of patience all you like. It doesn't change the truth. It was later that night, under the soothing silk of the Egyptian moonlight, that Layla found herself in Ahmed's warm embrace. Ahmed, his voice tender, whispered, Layla, I see the storm in your eyes. I hear the unspoken pain in your silence. Her eyes locked with his, pools of vulnerability laid bare before him. He continued, My love, your worth is not determined by Farida's words or Mona's judgments. You are enough, just as you are. A tear traced Layla's cheek. But Ahmed, her words echo in my mind, even when her voice has faded. Ahmed gently cupped her face. My heart... I will shield you from this pain. Farida's words are spears, but together we shall remain unbroken. His promise lingered in the air, intertwining with the hope that perhaps things could change, that their love could pave a path away from this anguish. Months later, that sliver of hope blossomed into joy when Layla discovered she was pregnant, with twins. Her hands cradled her belly, the miracle beneath her skin. Layla whispered to them, You are the light amidst our storm, my little ones. When the news unfolded, joy enveloped Ahmed and Layla's world. But in Farida, it birthed a peculiar kind of bitterness. In the family gathering that followed, Farida's congratulations held a hidden resentment. Her eyes narrowed as she spoke. Twins, you say, Layla? Well, let's hope they inherit better qualities from you. Layla, gently caressing her belly, responded. Every child is a reflection of not just their parents, but the environment they are nurtured in, Farida. Silence fell tension weaving through the room. Yet Layla's gaze remained unwavering, her spirit unbroken, much like the persistent flame that refuses to flicker out amidst the raging wind. The harshness in Ahmed's voice was unfamiliar, even to his own ears, as he confronted Farida. Her eyes flashed a mingling of defiance and surprise. Mother, my allegiance lies with Layla and our sons. I will not allow them to drown in the pool of your bitterness any longer. Farida's lips quivered with a seething anger and sorrow. Ahmed, how could you choose her over your own blood? It is not a matter of choosing, mother. It is a matter of protecting my family from harm, even if that harm comes from within our walls. Ahmed turned his gaze to Layla, who stood a few steps behind, cradling their twins, eyes welled up, yet breathing a silent relief. Leaving the house behind, with their belongings packed and hearts heavy yet hopeful, Ahmed, Layla, and their twins embarked on a journey towards a horizon unmarred by familial tempests. In their new world, nestled in a modest yet comforting abode, Layla, Ahmed, and the twins found peace that had long eluded them. Layla to Ahmed, her voice a tender melody. Ahmed, look at them. How freely they laugh, unburdened by sorrow. Ahmed nodded, his arm wrapping around her. This is the life I promised them, Layla. One where joy is not a visitor, but a permanent resident in their hearts. Weeks turned into months, and Layla discovered a community that embraced her warmth and shared in her joys and struggles. Their life was a tapestry of serene moments and simple pleasures. The twins, growing under the nurturing sunlight of love, knew nothing of the storm that had once loomed over their parents. 
Meanwhile, Farida, enveloped in the silence of her home, devised schemes to sow seeds of discord in their peaceful haven. Her fingers danced on the phone keypad, composing messages filled with accusations and guilts. Ahmed, have you forgotten your mother, who raised you when you were as little and helpless as your sons? But Ahmed, ever the protective fortress around his newfound peace, responded, Mother, our memories and respect for you remain, but we will not let your shadows dim the light we have built here. Layla often found herself gazing at the happy faces of her twins, the memory of Farida's piercing words a fading whisper in the distance. Yet the echo lingered, a reminder of the fortress she must maintain against the invasion of past agonies. One day, as the twins laughed, chasing each other in the golden glow of the setting sun, a neighbor, Mrs. Thompson, an elderly woman with wisdom etched into her wrinkles, approached Layla. Layla, dear, your family, it's like a beacon of hope and love. In your smiles I see a strength that speaks of battles won and peace hard-earned. Layla, her eyes reflecting the orange hue of the sunset, replied, Mrs. Thompson, every smile carries tales of tears, too. But we choose to let love write our ongoing story. Ahmed, despite the tranquility that enveloped his family, found himself caught in a crossfire of emotions. One evening, as he confided in Layla, his voice trembled ever so slightly. Layla, I find myself on a swaying bridge, where on one end sits my mother, enveloped in a darkness of her own making, and on the other, I see you, our sons, bathed in a light that we've carefully kindled. Layla, placing a gentle hand on his cheek, spoke with a steadfast gaze. Ahmed, the bridge may sway, but your feet are steady. Your path has always been guided by love, and will continue to be our guiding light. As Ahmed and Layla journeyed through days, their story unfolded, not as a fairy tale, but as a testament to the unyielding power of love amidst storms. Farida, an ever-present specter of the past, lingered on the fringes of their lives, a reminder of the tempest they had sailed through. Farida's hands, wrinkled and shaking, clutched the dust rag tightly as she moved it listlessly over the polished furniture. Her back ached, yet she dared not pause, for Mona's watchful eyes lingered nearby, gleaming with cruel satisfaction. Mona, sipping her tea languidly, remarked, You missed a spot, Farida. Honestly, I don't know what's become of your capabilities. Farida's voice barely above a whisper, I'm sorry, Mona. I'll be more careful. Mona chuckled, a sound devoid of warmth. Sorry? Layla used to say that a lot too, didn't she? Look where it got her, far away from this madness. Memories of Layla's soft, accommodating smile pierced Farida's heart. Yet she said nothing, moving to rectify the unseen mistake with weary movements. In the solitude of her sparse room, Farida's eyes, now dull and heavy with years of unshed tears, gazed at the photograph of Ahmed, Layla, and the twins. It had been sent through a distant relative, a wordless assurance of their well-being. Oh, Layla, she whispered into the silence. How did I become the monster that drove away my only son? But the walls offered no answer, only reflecting the sorrow that had become her constant companion. Tariq, now a tall young man with an air of indifference that seemed permanent, barely acknowledged Farida as he navigated through the spaces of the house, engrossed in his own world. Farida hesitated, then spoke with a voice quivering with desperation. Tariq, my boy, could you spend a little time with your grandmother today? He paused, glanced her way with detached eyes, and mumbled, Maybe later, Grandma. I'm busy. Farida nodded, the familiar sting of rejection nodding in her throat. Mona's control over the household was absolute. Her directives, delivered with a vicious joy, echoed through the corridors, reducing Farida to a mere specter of her former, dominant self. Mother-in-law, Mona's voice, slick with condescension, sliced through the air. The laundry seems to be piling up, and considering that you've plenty of time on your frail hands, perhaps you should attend to it. Farida, subdued and defeated, simply nodded, making her way towards the mountain of clothes with a heavy heart. One evening, under the guise of a walk, Farida, her legs trembling with both fear and anticipation, attempted to reach out to Ahmed, visiting the place where they had once lived as a family. She knocked gently, her heart pounding in her ears. Layla, looking ageless and happy, opened the door. 
her eyes widening momentarily before softening with pity upon seeing Farida. Hello, Farida. Her voice held no malice, only a serene distance. Tears glistened in Farida's eyes. Layla, my child, I've wronged you. I... Layla, gentle yet firm, interrupted. Farida, time has moved forward, and so have we. Your apologies, while acknowledged, change nothing of the past and our path ahead. Farida's voice, barely audible, choked with regret. May I see Ahmed? And the twins, just once? Layla shook her head, her resolve unbroken. No, Farida, our peace is precious, and I will not permit anything to disrupt it. You will remain in our prayers, but from afar. Farida, shattered yet understanding, nodded weakly, turning away, the bitter harvest of her past actions weighing heavily upon her soul. Back in the prison of her present, Farida continued to navigate through the merciless terrain of days, each one blending into the next in a continuous loop of monotony and regret. One day, as she gazed at her reflection in the mirror, a cascade of realizations crashed over her. The faces of Layla, Ahmed, and her grandsons flickered before her eyes, each a ghostly reminder of the love she had forsaken for control and dominance. Her whisper, lost amidst the silence of the room, echoed the agony of her spirit. The seeds of cruelty yield a relentless crop of solitude. In the ensuing days, Farida, her body withering away, mirrored the decay of her spirit, a solemn testament to the ancient truth that one indeed reaps as they sow. And so, she lingered on, a shadow amidst the remnants of a life that could have been, enveloped by the echoes of her misdeeds, whispering tales of love lost and the unbearable weight of regret. A gentle breeze whispered through the open window, carrying with it the scent of fresh jasmine. Layla watched as the twins, Adam and Zane, laughed and played in the yard, their joy resonating through the peaceful home she and Ahmed had built far from the storm that once threatened to engulf them. Mommy, why do you look sad? Adam, with his empathetic little eyes, had seen through her momentary reflection. Layla knelt down, embracing him gently. Oh, sweetheart, Mommy isn't sad. Just remembering things. Inside, as Ahmed entered, he sensed the subtle shift in Layla's demeanor and gently cupped her face. What's swirling in that beautiful mind of yours, my love? Layla sighed, nestling into his warmth. I was thinking about Farida. I wonder if she ever feels the absence, if she ever thinks about us. Ahmed, his voice firm yet gentle, reassured. Layla, we chose this path for a reason, for peace, for our boys, for us. Whatever Farida feels or doesn't feel is no longer our concern. Yet the shadows of the past lingered, woven into the threads of Layla's consciousness. One evening, as the twins settled into their beds, stories of kindness and love lulling them into serene dreams, Layla took out a piece of parchment, her thoughts cascading onto it. Dear Farida, this letter comes from a place of peace, a sanctuary built from the ruins that we once navigated together. Ahmed, our boys and I have found serenity, far from the tempests of the past. I write not to reopen old wounds, but to extend a hand of forgiveness across the chasm that divides our worlds. Forgiveness for the hurt, for the days darkened by your shadow, and for the unkind words that lingered long after they were spoken. Yet understand this, my forgiveness is not an invitation. We shall remain, as we have been, distant and separate. This boundary is both a protection and a necessity, safeguarded by the lessons of the past and the hope for the future. The world we have created for Adam and Zane is one where kindness reigns and love is unconditioned. They will know of their family, but not of the pain that once tethered us to darkened days. May you find peace, Farida, in whatever form it might exist for you. Take care, Layla. Farida, now enveloped by walls stained with the echoes of isolation, received the letter with trembling hands. Each word, a reflection of Layla's strength and grace, was a mirror held up to Farida's own fractured existence. In the quietude of her solitude, Farida whispered to the shadows. She found the strength to escape, to forgive, to build. Strength I never knew existed. Layla, after sending the letter, felt an inexplicable release, as if the chains of the past had finally rusted away liberating her from the ghostly tendrils of bygone pain. Ahmed, ever the anchor, enveloped her in an embrace, whispering, 
Whatever comes, we face it together. This oasis, this peace, it is ours, and nothing from the past can darken our doorstep unless we permitted entrance. Layla, looking up into his eyes, found the assurance she sought. We've built something beautiful, Ahmed. From pain, we've cultivated love. It's our legacy to the boys, isn't it? Ahmed nodded, his voice a gentle caress. Yes, love. From the ruins, an oasis was born. Our boys will inherit not the pain of the past, but the resilience it fostered. We stand here united, an unbreakable fortress built not of stones, but of unwavering love and understanding. In their oasis, Layla, Ahmed, Adam, and Zane thrived. The memories of storms and thorns relegated to distant whispers, acknowledged but no longer feared. For Layla, the act of penning the letter was a salve, healing the wounds with the balm of closure and the strength that arose from choosing kindness amidst the chaos. In the twilight of her existence, Farida, surrounded by the consequences of choices made in a life once ruled by venom and control, learned the severity of the harvest reaped from seeds sown in bitterness.